we want to find the Taylor polynomial of degree four centered at c equals zero for the function f of x equals natural log of the quantity one plus x. Then we want to use the Taylor remainder theorem to find all the values of x for which this approximation is within point zero zero one of the true function value f of x. Because the Taylor polynomial is centered at zero, we could call this a Maclaurin polynomial and looking at the definition here below for a Taylor polynomial centered at C, we could change all these C's to zero and instead of having the quantity X minus C, we would just have X raised to the appropriate power. But because we want to find the degree four Taylor polynomial, we do have to begin by determining the first four derivatives and then evaluating those functions at zero. Let's do this on the next slide. So we begin with our function F of X equals natural log of the quantity one plus x and therefore the first derivative would be equal to one over the quantity one plus x. Now applying the chain rule here, notice how the derivative of one plus x would just be one. But let's go ahead and write this as the quantity one plus x raised to the power of negative one to help us find the next derivative. The second derivative would be equal to, we'd multiply by negative one, so negative one times the quantity one plus x, subtract one from the exponent, so we have negative two. The third derivative would be equal to, multiplying by negative two, we have positive two times the quantity one plus x to the negative three. And then the fourth derivative would be equal to negative six times the quantity one plus x to the negative four. F of zero is equal to natural log one, which is zero, F prime of zero is equal to one. F double prime of zero equals negative one. F triple prime of zero equals positive two. And the fourth derivative at zero is equal to negative six. So the degree four Maclaurin polynomial is equal to F of zero, which is zero plus f prime of zero times x, that would be one times x, plus f double prime of zero divided by two factorial times x squared. f double prime of zero is negative one, so we have minus one divided by two factorial times x squared, plus the third derivative at zero, which would be two, divided by three factorial times x to the third. And then finally we have plus the fourth derivative or minus six divided by four factorial times x to the fourth. Notice how because the term is negative, it's more common to write minus instead of plus a negative. And now let's simplify. We'd have x minus one half x squared. This would be two six or one third, so plus one third x to the third. Four factorial is equal to twenty-four. This would be six twenty-fourths or one-fourth. So minus one-fourth x to the fourth. So this would be our Taylor polynomial centered at zero or the Maclaurin polynomial. And now for the second part of the question, we want to find all the values of x on this interval for which the approximation using the Taylor polynomial would be within point zero zero one of the true function value. When using a Taylor polynomial, the error or the absolute value of r sub n of x will be less than or equal to the max of the absolute value of the n plus one derivative evaluated at z, where z would be in this interval, times the absolute value of x minus c raised to the n plus one power divided by n plus one factorial. So we need to find the max of the absolute value of, because we use a degree four Taylor polynomial, this would be the fifth derivative of f, evaluated at z, where z would be in this interval, times the absolute value of x minus zero to the fifth power. So we'd have the absolute value of x to the fifth, divided by five factorial, and we want this to be less than or equal to 0 0.001. Now going back to the previous slide, 
notice how the fifth derivative would be equal to positive 24 times the quantity 1 plus x to the power of negative 5. So if the fifth derivative is equal to 24 times the quantity 1 plus x to the power of negative 5, we want to determine the max of the absolute value of this function on this interval. Let's write this as 24 divided by the quantity 1 plus x raised to the fifth. Notice how the maximum value would occur when x is zero when we have just 24 divided by one. If we increased x, notice how we'd be dividing by a larger number, decreasing the value of this function. And therefore, the maximum value of this fifth derivative occurs when z is zero, which would be 24 divided by one or 24, which means the max of this absolute value here would be 24. So we can write this as 24 divided by five factorial is equal to 120. And then we'd have times the absolute value of x to the fifth less than or equal to 0 0.001. Let's isolate the absolute value here by multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 24 over 120. We could simplify this, but let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the reciprocal without simplifying. We'd have point zero zero one times, we'd have 120 over 24, which gives us point zero zero five. And now we can take the fifth root, or raise both sides to the one-fifth power. So we'd have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 0 0.005 raised to the one-fifth power. Again, if we raise both sides here to the one-fifth, this would simplify to the absolute value of x. So 0 0.005 raised to the power of one-fifth gives us approximately 0 0.34657. But because we're considering this interval here, we would say the closed interval from zero to zero point three four six five seven. Let's take a look at this graphically. The graph of the original function is graphed in blue, and the graph of the Maclaurin polynomial is graphed here in red. On this interval here from zero to approximately zero point three four six five seven, the Taylor polynomial approximation would be within point zero zero one of the true function value graphed here in blue. I hope you found this helpful.